It's been over a month since the occupation regime in Tel Aviv claimed that resistance fighters in Gaza had been demoralized and defeated. In fact, the occupation, at some point, claimed that northern Gaza had been overrun, with strategic defense locations of Palestinian freedom fighters destroyed. They stated that the alleged success there prompted the shift to the south. Yet, continued fighting in many areas of the north has debunked the media stunt that the resistance is no more in Gaza. Missiles have continued to harass the occupation in their comfort zone. It appears the Israeli forces, despite their air advantage, have remained at a loss on how to properly tackle the secretive prowess of the resistances. The fact that missiles keep flying into Tel Aviv and the structure of the Palestinian freedom fighters still manages to survive are military victories that have kept the Israeli army on their toes. This shows that despite what anybody says, the crisis in Palestine defies any military solution, and the defeat of Hamas cannot be possible in the current military atmosphere in Gaza. A video, the release time of which cannot be independently verified, allegedly shows the firing of missiles into Israeli airspace, leaving many wondering whether Israel has sincerely been targeting its adversary or has been more focused on the total displacement of ordinary Palestinians from their homes. The possibility that this has been the modus operandi of the occupation forces is becoming glaring. This unverified video underscores the depth of the Palestinian resistance forces and how intact they are, despite Israel and the US government's claims to the contrary. It shows that the ability to fire missiles into Israel by the Palestinian group remains very active and continues to play a pivotal role in defending their rights in Gaza. How this is happening amidst intense bombardments by occupation warplanes still amazes independent observers. This confirms the allegations made by many crisis observers that Israel's alleged intention is to displace the people of Palestine. For instance, the Euromed Human Rights Monitor stated that the Israeli army's claim, stating that every killed armed individual or faction member results in the loss of two civilian lives, is false. According to preliminary statistics provided by the Euromed Monitor, based on field documentation, at least 9 out of 10 Palestinian deaths resulting from Israeli attacks are civilian deaths. The death toll of Palestinians has risen to 21,022 since the start of the war in the Gaza Strip. This number includes those missing under the rubble, whose chances of survival have almost completely diminished, comprising 8,312 children and 4,270 women. It's important to note that 19,660 of the deceased are civilians. According to the Human Rights Group, these figures clearly refute the Israeli claim, as 60% of the deceased are women and children. 40% of the deceased are men, the majority of whom, 65%, were civilians and elderly. The Euromed Monitor highlighted that among the male civilian victims were individuals employed by the United Nations and international organizations, those associated with the Palestinian Authority, people with special needs, and individuals holding Israeli security permits for employment in Israel. The casualties also encompassed 280 medical personnel, 26 rescue workers, 112 United Nations staff, and 77 journalists and media professionals. The Geneva-based rights organization emphasized that its initial statistics on civilian casualties align with figures released by the United Nations and its specialized agencies. These figures indicate that approximately 70% of those killed in Israel's war on the Gaza Strip were women, children, and elderly individuals. These statistics were presented by the World Health Organization, the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, OCHA, 
and the United Nations Population Fund. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres previously remarked that Gaza had become a cemetery for children. According to the Euromed Monitor, Israel is obliged by international humanitarian law and the laws of war to safeguard civilians and refrain from attacking them under any circumstance. This contradicts Israel's broadening of the army's authority to strike non-military targets and its relaxation of restrictions concerning anticipated civilian casualties. The Israeli army's official statements, announcing extensive assassination operations against what it deems as wanted individuals, have so far listed more than 22 reported targets and acknowledged the significant toll of victims in each operation. In comparison to its prior military operations in the Gaza Strip, Israel's current bombing of the region is notably more intense. The ongoing airstrikes target non-military sites like homes, public buildings, and critical infrastructure, aiming to severely disrupt civil society. Israel, which has blockaded the Gaza Strip since 2006, possesses extensive intelligence files on the majority of potential targets in Gaza, including residential structures. This allows them to estimate the probable number of civilian casualties resulting from an attack on a specific target. Army intelligence units are pre-aware of these figures, calculating them prior to the attack, and foreseeing the approximate number of civilian casualties before initiating the strike. However, they often underestimate the actual toll of civilian lives lost and categorize them as collateral damage. The Euromed Human Rights Monitor concluded that the rate of civilian deaths in Israel's ongoing conflict in the Gaza Strip is the highest among conflict areas globally in the 21st century. This starkly violates the principles of human rights and international humanitarian law, which prioritize the protection of civilians above all. Insert. The United States seems to be fostering this blatant disregard for international human rights norms by preventing Israel from accepting a ceasefire or halting the deliberate targeting of innocent civilians in Gaza and other Palestinian territories. Despite increasing calls to halt the regime's atrocities, the United States vetoed a United Nations Security Council resolution demanding an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Israel's relentless war on the besieged Gaza Strip. On Friday, 13 Security Council members supported a draft resolution proposed by the United Arab Emirates, while Britain abstained and the US vetoed it, leaving itself isolated in siding with Israel's aggression. In light of these developments, particularly concerning Britain, which had been vocal about human rights and defense in Ukraine, it's surprising that the same country turns a blind eye to the ongoing loss of Palestinian lives due to the self-defense narrative put forth by the occupying Israeli force. Let's hear it! Former UK Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn pointed out the double standards. Let's hear it for the people of the West Bank, for the people of Gaza, for the people of the refugee camps, and say very bluntly to our political leaders in this country, do not condone war crimes. He tweeted moments after the UN Security Council vote, tonight, the UK refused to support a UN resolution for a ceasefire. We mourn those whose lives were deemed unworthy of protection. We stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people to end the bombings, blockades, and occupation. There is no possible justification for deliberately killing... The vote occurred following a formal warning by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres to the 15-member council on the global threat posed by the two-month-long Israeli war against the defenseless people of Gaza. I appreciate your dedication to supporting our content. Please consider showing your appreciation by liking and sharing this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay updated with the latest developments in Palestine. Until our next update, peace.